One of you go. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Brian doesn't want to say it, so I'll say it. The funk <laughs> phase. Growing up on the water with fishing in their blood, Matt Airy and Brian Thrift have spent the last 10 years competing against the biggest names in professional bass fishing. Their success has landed them ranked among the top anglers in the world. If you're looking to become a better angler, then this show has all the answers. Join us and follow along to get actionable tips, tactics, and tried and true techniques directly from the pros. Welcome to Let's Talk Fish. We're live. We're back. We're live. Oh, now you want to talk. Now I'll talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, uh, we, so the topic this week, the funk phase, not to be confused with anything else out there, uh, <laughs> is, was going to be our topic last Tuesday. And because we realized our schedules and everything had been revamped with MLF and the Bassmaster Elite Series, we, Decided to talk about that because we were so excited we get to go back fishing in a couple weeks. Uh, we got a little sidetracked and we left this topic alone and we saved it for y'all, for you 150 viewers that we have already. Thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, and I knew y'all would have fun with this title. Needless to say, we've already yeah. getting some we comments. Need to, what, are we talking about like actual bass being in the funk phase or? What do you think we were talking about? Well, sometimes I get in a funk and I don't catch bass. Well, we could. That, that's good. That's good. Well, let's we go, roll with we that go too. two different yeah. directions. Let's okay. go two different directions. Let's go two different Cause, directions. Because we talk about Before how. Before you get started. What? Just explain without giving away the answer what we're doing tonight for the trivia giveaway. We have a trivia giveaway tonight. And first off, <laughs> let me start before. He's going to give that. <laughs> I'm not going to give the answer away. Do you know the answer? Absolutely, I know. All right, seventy percent chance he gives the answer. I say eighty-three point two. Eighty-three, okay. Eighty-three point two. It's dropping then every week. Last week it was like ninety percent. Last week I didn't know that it was the week before. I didn't even know the answer. See, I think that's great when we can come up with trivia questions where they ha where we don't even have an answer yet. That is good. That protects me, <laughs> does, and and we can also if if my answer is actually wrong, we could they they're not going to know the difference. That's true. So, I mean, unless somebody was there, like, witness what you <laughs> called it, like hickory or whatever it was. Um, all right, so I say this at the beginning of every show. I'm going to continue to say it because we're still getting a few messages and complaints. The no, I wouldn't say complaints, but people, we are sharing this show across multiple platforms, like seven different pages. It's if, on my page, Matt's page. Bass top casters, water blow ups, top bass water blow ups, casters, yeah. Titan tungsten. Titan. But it's, you've got to comment here on the Let's Talk Fish page. If you want to interact with us and engage with us and ask questions <laughs> that Brian will answer, then come over to the Let's Talk Fish Facebook page. If you want to be eligible for this giveaway, and you can see what's in front of me, we've got four lose reels in front of me right now. For every 250, we're almost we're almost breaking 200, which we usually get anywhere from 200 to 400 <laughs> viewers. We, for every 200, this was Jeff's idea, for every 250 viewers tonight, we're going to add another lose reel to the giveaway. So we're going to start with one at 250. Then we're going to go to two at 500. Y'all are impressed I can add. I can, yeah, 750. Don't forget to carry the one. <laughs> and a, at 1,000. A <laughs> I carried the one for the What's thousand. What's the odds of us getting so, that many? Well, I just, I we've mean. We've had 750 before. We've had okay. 750 okay. before. When Hank was yeah, here. Yeah, when, when, when Hank was here. Um, you know, and, and, and we were, you, were, you were in the potty earlier when we were deciding this. But, okay. But, nice. but, but what we decided to do. Was also I, I, Jeff's like, no, nah, we just give them all away for one for one winner. But now nah, what we're gonna do is, if we get to five hundred, we're gonna add another trivia question. Oh, I like for a that. separate winner. Yeah, and that's, then we, that's we, the way get, to do it. So, y'all figure out how to get to five hundred or seven fifty or a thousand or whatever it may be. But we'll give away up to four reels tonight, which is pretty awesome. Jeff, that's a great idea. That was a good idea. Good job. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> it. I'm, I'm tearing up over here. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, let's see. All right, so we want to start off by talking about. Uh, first off, I gotta get a. Uh, I gotta give a shout out to Angler's Choice Marine. Um, they they sent me. Trent sent me a message tonight. They're getting ready to give away a trip uh, with Mr. Marty Stone 
Uh, I believe it's on. Is it? Did I say Bugs Island? Is it on Bugs? You didn't save the lake. I'm not sure the lake. Not okay. sure the lake. But you could probably go to their website. Uh, definitely drop in Angler's Choice. It's by still by appointment only, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Um, if you buy a boat between, I think it's May 1st, and I wrote it down here on my notes, but I don't know what I. I'm losing my mind here. <laughs> I got so much junk. You got a lot of junk papers. I don't have any notes. <clears throat> May. I don't know. I'm going to throw something out there. <laughs> the just go May. buy a boat at Angler's Choice. Go, just if, go buy a boat at if Angler's Choice. They're going to draw at the end of May. Don't hold me to the exact day. <laughs> <laughs> could be June. For anybody that purchased a boat in the month of May, it could, could, could be June. It's not June. I know it's the end of May. It's definitely uh, by Christmas. And the winner gets to go on a uh, fishing trip with Mr. Marty Stone. Uh, I mean, I believe it's on Bugs Island, but don't hold me to that either. I don't really know if anything I'm saying is true, but <laughs> no. They're I definitely, definitely giving a boat away. We know that's Not true. a boat. I mean, not giving a boat. <laughs> They're giving away a trip with Marty Stone if you buy a boat. Maybe. 100%. Maybe. 100%. <laughs> maybe. Kind 100% of sort of. maybe. Uh, they're definitely giving one away. <laughs> Almost. Uh, <laughs> I think the only way, and I haven't said this in a long time, everybody's like, quit saying share the show, share the show. I think if every if we got 200 people on here, and if those 200 people, I bet if those 200 people would all share the show one time, I bet we'd give away at least two reels tonight. What yeah, most likely. At least two most reels. Likely. And then that would make thrift because I gave him 30 minutes to come up with a trivia <laughs> question tonight, and he couldn't, so Jeff came up with one in like two seconds. Then thrift would have to actually come up with a trivia question to add to our other trivia question so we can have two winners uh, instead of one. I come um, up with trivia question all the time. <clears throat> Ryan Sowers, he wants to know when we'll see a boat. Yeah, right. When? All the time. All the time. All the time. <laughs> Do you remember one, Jeff? Every time you don't come up with one. Which is never. All the time. He said, well, um, when will we see a boat for a trivia question prize? I said, you need you need to go over to Angler's Choice and holler at them about that. <laughs> and see what we can give away a boat on here. Um, <clears throat> all right. Let's see. The funk phase. So... See, I said it again, Brian. Just say yeah. it. Say it one I, time. I didn't say the funk phase a bunch. Okay, <laughs> I went through a funk phase in college. He wait, a lot of us I went did. through a funk phase in college. Yeah. Though, let's start off by talking about not how to catch the fish and and what this start as it, the, the the topic came up um, because we've all seen those fish kind of in that little transition time, and it's a short period because then they get on like a shad spawn or heron spawn. But right. there's a little small window in the spring when the majority of the fish. The big ones. I'm talking about the big ones, not the buck bass, because right. they'll be on the bed for a month, some of them. Um, maybe not a month, but a long time. And they're a lot easier to catch than four or five and six pounders, as we all know. Um, Where are there, you going with this? There's a small window <laughs> of when those really big females are really, really, really hard to catch right after you get done spawning. There is. And I always wondered why it got called a funk phase. Because I, just, I just started calling. Yeah, know. oh no! Like I've heard that forever since I started bass fishing. You know, it's the postponed funk or something like that. But it's more or less it's the same as pre-spawn and anything. It's a transition phase. Those fish are transitioning from being up shallow spawning to going to where they're going to spend their summers, and it's it's kind of a, a weird time of year because you have so many fish doing so many different things. There's not one thing you can do and to me when you're in this period it's the junk fisherman's paradise like that's when a junk fisherman shines and it lasts for a couple of weeks and until you really start seeing big groups of fish grouped up offshore but it's it's that absolute junk fisherman's paradise junk in the funk that's all you got to remember junk, junk, that junk, needs to be a t-shirt did you just say junk in the funk yes junk during the funk junk during the funk junk in the funk that t-shirt that idea. could be another t-shirt that's a t-shirt for sure. <laughs> uh, oh bobby williams thank you bobby mr williams he said uh it is bugs island keith wood also threw that in there the ad said bugs we hit 250 i've already seen that so we're giving away one lose reel tonight i'll just sit over here to the side <laughs> we hit 500 and we'll give away a second lose reel tonight um what happens to the ones we don't give away <clears throat> jeff take them home no, he he actually had those on special and he was selling Ooh. a few of them so um what did we just say what are we doing with <laughs> He said, what happens to the ones we don't give away tonight? I don't know. Nobody knows. You but. never know. <laughs> <laughs> um, the funk phase, it's just fun to say, isn't it? It, it is. It's just kind of fun. fun to say. Uh, so, 
Uh, now I lost my train of thought now. All right. We'll, I'll go oh, oh no, no, no. Let's back up. Let's back up. So you talked about where do you think, and I've, I've we, we've laid our eyes on a few, but let's right when a big, giant female bass gets done doing the thing, doing the deed in the spring, the second she's done spawning, where does she go? I'm not talking about like she doesn't just bolt out to deep water no. and set up on a ledge. She doesn't run over here to the bridge and eat shad. Where does she go the second she gets she gets done spawning? I think she goes out in the middle of the cove she spawned in and hangs out for a couple of days, and she is absolutely impossible to catch. No, we're supposed to be teaching everybody how to catch those. Well, that's the cool <laughs> thing about the funk face. And what we talked about is that being a junk fisherman paradise, all the fish are doing something different. It's, it's hard to find a group of fish. It's hard to run one particular pattern. They're all in different moods. They're all in different moods, because, especially because the funk phase doesn't really begin until the spawn's been going on for a couple of weeks. So we'll say three weeks. After that's when you start getting in that funk phase, when there's not really a lot of fish on the bed. There's just a few. There's not really a lot of fish that are on brim beds or on a shad spawn and there's not really a lot of fish out deep there's kind of fish scattered around everywhere and that usually begins about the third week of the spawn wherever you're at in the country especially in our area so you <clears> kind of <throat> gotta the way i approach it is i do a little bit of everything i've always got 20 rods on the deck but that time of year is when i'll actually have 20 rods on the deck and throw all 20 of them for sure because i may pull in a pocket and look for bed and fish throw top water i may fish docks for suspended fish i may roll out and fish deep to try to catch one or two fish on each different type of structure and that's how i attack the funk face okay so back and, and backing up a little bit when you said <laughs> i agree 110 percent that a lot of those females the second they're done spawning they slide out and they suspend in the middle of those pockets I've seen some of those fish laying on top of the water before. Yeah. And I've seen some, and you know they're spawned out because they just look bad. Right, you know? yeah, they're just um, laying there like in recovery mode. And I've seen several up under docks that mm -hmm. I know were done spawning. Yep. Um, that are, there are some that are 100% uncatchable. Yes. I mean, let's just go ahead and throw that out there because we don't want to make everybody think we're going to teach everybody how to catch every single one of those fish. Right, because it's uh, impossible. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but let's talk about some techniques to catch a few of those fish um, and I, I'm not even going to say 50% of them are catchable because they're pro it's probably a lot lower than that, the ones that are actually just finished. Right. Um, it's almost like trying to catch one while they're rolling. Not quite that bad. But, no, uh, but, it, but it can be. And yeah. it can be just as frustrating because you see so many big fish that may be suspended under a dock like Matt just said or laying under a bush or just sitting somewhere sunning and you throw something at them and they just swim away real slow, don't even look at it, don't pay it any attention. And then you do it all day, and you see 10 or 15 great big ones, and none of them bite. And before you know it, it's way in time, and you've got eight pounds. That's when you've got to be able to mix in everything we're going to talk about tonight for as far as having a successful tournament during this phase of the, you know, of the year, what's happening. <clears throat> so <laughs> let's talk about baits. Um, obviously, I know – your one of your go-to's going to be a, a stinger. Oh yeah, and 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 the same with me, just a five-inch lunker Let, stick. Let's break it down by the the different ways you can approach fish during the funk phase. Like, so we've already talked about there's possibly a few fish still on the bed, mm -hmm. and you've possibly got a shad spawn, bluegill spawn fish. Yep, and you've possibly got some offshore fish, deep fish. So let's let's break it down, and would you agree that that's probably the three main ways you're going to target fish during this phase of the year? Yeah, well, you said you still got some spawning fish, you've got some shad spawn fish, and you've got a few deep fish. Yeah, yeah, and and I would I would throw in definitely like if you if you if you're looking at a a, um, a highly populated lake, you know, it's got a lot of docks and things like that. I do feel like there's a lot of catchable fish that are on those docks on their way out. Right. So we can kind of mix that in. Okay. I don't know if that falls under the yeah, I that, guess that's, that's kind, kind of, of an in between deal. Yeah, that's kind of a different. Category. So let, let's let's kind of that secondary type structure. They might stop on a secondary yes. point, um, you know, things like that. So, uh, th I mean, it's really, I mean, it's really endless opportunity. It goes back yeah. to what you were saying about junk fishing because right. those are the three main deals that we're going to look for because we feel like that might be the most reliable. But you're liable to catch one anywhere. Exactly. You know, and, and I know that doesn't help a lot. <laughs> but um, talk about. Like, but let, that's let's, kind of what. 
that's really what Matt and myself learned, how we learned to fish, because it's not like fishing here in North Carolina. A lot of times it's not like fishing a ledge lake or somewhere where you're sitting on one spot all day. You've got to have 50 or 60 different places. You run to fish a little bit, run to another one, make a couple casts. And that is the perfect approach to the post spawn funk because it lets you sample a little bit of everything. There's not a lot of fish that are active, but the more places you hit and the more high percentage targets you hit, the better your chances become of getting your bait in front of five big ones that are willing to bite. Like it, it's more of a numbers game than it is a, like I've got to go sit here all day because I know I'm going to catch them you, this time of year. The more stuff you run and the faster you fish, the better your odds are catching a big bag of fish. You know, I was I was going to sit here and make myself sound really smart for a second, but I'm going to give you all the credit here. This time of year, and probably a quote that comes out of Brian Thrift, uh, <laughs> probably no applies. No, 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 it's, it's good, I promise. <laughs> I'm not throwing you under the bus. I, I'll do that when I get the chance, but I'm not going to do that right now. This was in. This might have been in an article that you did. It's been years ago. You did something with FLW, and they were talking about. I think it might have been when you won an Angler of the Year title, and they were talking about decision making, this, that, and the other. And this time of year, this quote probably applies more than any other time of the year. Maybe, maybe, maybe just as maybe the same in kind of a fall transition time. Um, like when we fish some of the cups and things like that, or, or even just after that. Right. But his quote was, <clears throat> you know, the the more decisions that a man can make throughout the day efficiently, and this isn't your exact quote, my, my, my theory is I only have to make five of the right ones. Yes. And that quote probably applies more to this particular type situation. Now, the difference is when Brian Thrift says that, you have to be – being versatile is one thing, but you have to be efficient while you're versatile. So every <laughs> every decision you make, if you go over to this dock, your application needs to be the right thing. If you go out to this ledge, your application needs to be the right thing. If you yes. go up to this spawning fish, your application or technique needs to be exactly right. So being efficient and super versatile obviously plays a, a key role in that. But there again, back to what you were saying, you know, the man that can make the most decisions efficiently – Yes. Is probably going to come out on top in a phase like this because he only has to make five of the right ones. Yeah. And we're not saying this is something you need, like, running around fishing 50 or 60 different places, fishing offshore and fishing shallow or suspended fish all in the same day. But I would definitely start out doing that first thing in the morning until I figure out what, if there is a, something the majority of the fish are doing. You know, if I start out early and the uh, roll up in a pocket and – I'm throwing a deep pop around and I catch three or four real quick. I'm going to run with that deep pop as long as I can make it work. And then once it stops working, I'll maybe go to throwing a jig or shaky head under docks like Matt mentioned earlier or, or start sampling some offshore stuff. But but that time of year, you can't, you can't really get stale because the fish will change or they're changing so different. And just because you go in one pocket and catch two or three on a – D pop or pop or something like that you may run 20 pockets after that and never get a bite that's the postponed funk and you've got to you've got to be able to forget about what happened at eight o'clock in the morning when it's 11 o'clock and it's still not working you've got to be able to forget about what you did earlier get, switch gears do, do, go do something totally different even switch ends of the lakes like i've i've noticed i've had several successful days on the water where I'll catch fish early and then everything just goes stale this time of year. And I may crank up that Evan route and run 40 miles up the river or something like that. Just get away from that area of the lake and go somewhere totally different to try to catch fish that are in a different phase or that maybe spawned a little bit earlier or something like that. Yeah. So, um, I saw a, a question from Jonathan Carter. To, he said, talk about when to fish slow and when to fish fast this time of year. So that goes back to, um, the right application the right approach to each situation now when i pull up to a dock and i'm fishing a dock this time of year and i think there's a big one under it and, and if we're throwing a wacky worm or, or a shaky head or something like that um, i'm going to hit the highest percentage areas of that dock as fast as i can um, meaning that like brian said you don't want to spend a ton of time doing one thing unless you're just 
absolutely smashing them. Yeah. Um, so you want to be able to make a bunch of different decisions. You know, you get done fishing that dock, run over here um, to this uh, stretch of riprap and, uh, and and throw a topwater down it. Run back there and check for a late spawner. Run out to the bridge, check for some shad spawn fish. Go out deep and fish some brush piles. You know, mix it up. Um, so no if you can fish slow but fast if that makes any sense and yeah. and, and well that means it means <laughs> no hitting, i know exactly hitting the that. highest percentage spots right um so you're so i think where matt's going with that and he's exactly right and this is the best time of year to do that God, i love it when you say that well i mean it, it is it, <laughs> it, this is a time of year that matt excels like a lot he's that was like a month ago we missed that whole, yeah, we missed still, that whole thing that's pretty good now too so like if you're going down a bank, throw what Matt's talking about, knowing when to go fast and when to slow down. If you're going down a bank with bushes and riprap and stuff, fish fast down that. When you get to a piece of structure like the dock, that's when you want might want to slow down and fish a wacky worm or drag a bait or something like that. But you don't have to sit there and milk it. You can give it two or three casts and then go back to burning down the bank until you start getting little clues to let you know exactly what those fish are doing you know you're burning down the bank fishing and you come out to a point maybe stop and fire a couple of casts out on the end of the point to see if any fish have moved out deep and then just begin your way on around wherever whichever direction you're going but but i wouldn't just get dead focused on doing that one thing because they will definitely change up on you and you'll get burned by it. I mean, I got a, a perfect example was uh, last week when me and Shane LaHue were fishing at Norman. I mean, it was about as postponed funk as it gets. And we seen a lot of big fish. We couldn't catch any of them. And we we let ourselves die with that. Like, we all day long. We Easy to get sidetracked when yeah. you're visually laying eyes right. on I them. I mean, we've seen four or five, three and a half to five pound fish. And... We never got any of them to bite, and about 10 o'clock when we had four and a half pounds in the live well, I'm like, we're both thinking we need to go run some deep stuff, try to catch a couple two and a half pounders at least, get us going in the right track, maybe get back shallow later on in the day. But we never did it. We kept, we stayed shallow the whole day, and we ended up having like seven pounds. So hindsight's twenty twenty. but if we had went and checked some deep stuff, you know, we, we may have done a lot better. So you gotta you gotta be able to jump around and fight your own demons. You gotta you gotta fight the own demons in your head that are telling you what to do, but you're like, no, I want to do this. That can that, kind of that, that, that can cross over for that mental funk phase. Oh, we'll yeah. talk about that in a minute. But um, Joey Randall he asked a question. He said, Matt, does the fetch still catch them in the funk? It it will catch a few um, during this phase, especially when you get some of those fry garters and things like that activated. But let me tell you, let me give you a tip on catching some of those fish we were talking about that might be suspended under the docks or recovering out in the oh, center of those good. pockets. And what I, what I want to say is is stealth is a huge deal, and we just lost a light. Jeffrey! Jeffrey! <laughs> Where'd you go, Jeffrey? <laughs> we lost dark. a light. We lost a light. It's getting dark in our studio. Yeah. yeah. We, we, that one is not working. I'm just though. telling you it went out. We had we had to call our tech man in for a minute. Sorry. He, where are you going? Uh, what what are you doing? I got this on real quick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Somebody wanted you to weigh in on the funk phase. I know. Think y'all can handle I think we can. I mean, Ryan Sowers, why is it Jeff weighing in on the funk? Yeah. You got anything to add? I mean, okay. nothing. Like never even been to a <laughs> George Clinton concert. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> all right there we go there we go <laughs> jeff's edition <laughs> jeff's edition is he has been to a, a what george clinton oh george clinton concert before. that's his that's his ad to the funk phase tonight <laughs> that's not the exact type of funk we were talking about jeff but um <laughs> but we'll funk. take it yeah <laughs> back to what i was saying some of those fish that we're talking about that some of the hardest ones to catch <clears throat> there is a there's a really really cautious approach you need to take those fish one is stealth is really important those fish can be some of the spookiest fish you've ever seen and nine times out of ten when you can't catch them like brian and i were talking about and you skip something up by their nose especially if it disrupts the water a lot that you just see them disappear just yeah. i mean the blink you of an get eye. one chance you get if, one chance if you so, make a bad cast or if they see you or something happens no way you're catching that fish back to being efficient and that is precise uh, mechanics meaning being able to cast a bait exactly where you want it um, don't land it on his head 
Put it 6, 8, 10 feet past, 25 feet past him if you have to. Just put it past him. Don't land it short of him and don't land it on his face. Um, put it past him. Well, there's two trains of thoughts there. Well, you talking we'll about talk, making, we'll, we'll talk about about making one react if you land yes. it right on his head. Now, I have seen and witnessed, you know, skipping a half-ounce jig up under a dock and one taking it off the top of the water. Right. If that's what you're talking about. But it seems like more often than not, it yes. takes a stealthier approach to yeah, catch Yeah, I, I agree. So, I mean, I'm glad you, you added that. And but, that, that's what uh, what Matt's saying by not putting a bait right on her head. I would definitely do that for the first couple. Yeah. And if they didn't bite it, the next couple I seen, I would try to land the bait right on their nose and see if they would just snap at it as it goes by. Yep. And same way if you throw it past them. You're, you're, you know, if the fish is facing left, make sure you're out past him to the left. You know, don't throw it towards his tail because, like Brian said, you're not going to get a lot of shots, a lot of opportunities at the fish like that. No. Um, the, it, there, nine times out of ten, if you're going to catch him, you're going to catch him on the first cast. Mm-hmm. Um, after that, uh, good luck is all I can say. <laughs> good luck. Um, 331 viewers. We only need to get to 500 to give away a second reel. And that makes Thrift come up with another trivia question, which would be awesome. So <laughs> get let's get to 500. And you know what the sad part is? I'm sure we have 500, if not six or 700. They're just across spread off. They're just spread out across <laughs> other pages. So that if everybody will get over to the LTF page, uh, not only can you interact with us and engage and ask some questions, but um, our numbers will, will, will climb too, and we can give away another one of these lose reels. Um, all right. So instead of jumping straight into the 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 mental funk phase, let's uh, let's take a couple let's, more uh, questions. Let's go. We we've, we've talked about the two of the different ways we would attack the funk with uh, maybe looking for late spawners, looking for the fish suspended under docks and things. We haven't talked, they haven't mentioned anything much about fishing deep yet for them. So let, let's touch on that a little bit before we move on. So you're you're talking about a big lethargic female that just got out deep, is not schooled up or, yet. Or maybe aggressive. these aren't lethargic females. They're just a few of the first spawners. Okay. That have recovered. There's not many out deep. There's not enough out deep to idle over them and mark a school. There's just maybe one fish here, one fish there. Some of the very first fish that spawned on the lake, and they're the first ones out there maybe on offshore structure, on the deeper brush piles underneath docks and things like that. So let's let's talk about that approach. And to me, it's an approach where I don't want to be on the main lake. I want it to be something that's close to a pocket or close to a creek, somewhere those fish have spawned. But I want something offshore that's right there close to those spawning areas. As Wheeler would call it, sneaky. 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 It's, it's not really sneaky. It's pretty obvious <laughs> if you think about it because that's the first place those first spawners are going to go. They're not going to spawn and go straight out to the river channel drop. They're going to stop on some little secondary stuff. It may be a brush pile under a dock. It may be um, a, a point or something like that, a channel swing inside the creek channel or something like that. But it's something that you have to fish to find. You can't idle. You can't mark the fish. You're not going <clears> to <throat> idle over a point and see 40 sitting there. But there's going to be one or two big ones sitting on a type of isolated structure, a high percentage place that one big one's going to set up before it goes out and gets on its summertime ledges. Justin and, Johnson wants you to de- – I didn't mean to interrupt. He wants, no, he wants you to define deep, and I know that that varies. But let's just, let's just average it out. Let's give a five-foot range on what we define as deep in the southeast mostly. Um, I'm going to say 15 to 20. Okay. What do you think? I'd agree. I would okay. agree. We very rarely do we catch many fish right. around here deeper than 20 foot. Yeah. 20, very, 20, very 20 is right around that that kind of that key depth range. I, we catch a lot in 17 to 19 foot. Yeah. You know. Um, but, yeah, so uh, anyway. And um, talking about those fish, let's – if you could pick one bait, only one bait to target those fish. And we might have a different theory on this. And, of course, you – Caught more of those fish than I have. Um, but when I'm thinking those little bitty isolated big giant, what's your sun drop? I don't, I don't know, know what you're talking to. Blew us. up. Makes me think of that scene from Ghostbusters when the I poster know. starts dancing. Oh, God. Oh, God. Where were we? Okay. Sorry. We're talking about those those 
those really one or two or three fish groups that are moving out deep. They're not all, right. all the way out there yet. They're kind of in a secondary area coming out of a, a creek or a pocket. Um, and and I, my my theory is is you kind of have to feed a lot of those fish. You know what I mean? Yes. And and when they're grouped up in those ten or twelve or even seven or eight fish or twenty or thirty fish schools, you know I'll I'll, I'll get to starting throwing more reaction baits, swim baits, crank baits, things like that, hopping a jig violently, stroking a worm, things like that. But um, when you're talking about those little small isolated fish, um, what's your what what would be your your go to bait? Uh, uh, <clears throat> in in, a de- in in deep, you know, obviously 15, 20 foot. Yeah, like we're my, talking. my number one bait for that time of year is going to be a Texas rig worm, whether it's something like a monster worm or a stinger if they want that slimmer profile. But some kind of Texas rig on a little bit lighter line. I'll throw it on 12 <laughs> to 15 pound P line tactical a lot. And to me, that's a bait that, like Matt just said, these fish are kind of recovering. You don't want something that's going to spook them. You want something that's going to look like a nice, easy meal, something that's just going to crawl by them and they can effortlessly, effortless, I can't say it. Effortlessly? Do that <laughs> as the bait. They can eat it like that very effortlessly. Hey, I say, I got it. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> and, I, and I agree 100% on the same way. <laughs> I thought we might have different different theories on that because – what a lot of people think about, and I and I think about this a lot too, when those fish get done spawning and they get out there and they get on the forage spawn, the shad spawn, heron spawn, whatever it may be, we, we, we want to jump straight into the crank baits and the swim baits and the shad right. imitation baits. But a big worm right after the spawn can be one of the best baits yes. to catch a big fish mm-hmm. there is. And um, get a lot of bites also. Yeah, and get a lot of bites. That's right. And, and I mean... A shaky head. I mean, dude, I can't tell you how many just with a seven or eight inch straight tail worm on a shaky head, uh, or just a five inch stick bait on a shaky head, uh, have caught a ton of fish this time of year, um, throwing a shaky head too. Uh, but a yeah. big Texas rig worm, shaky head worm, um, something like that. I know the Ned rigs become real popular, but you know you can't work it around structure and those little maybe a little isolated brush pile or something that one of those big fish might be set up right. on. Um, obviously, Texas rigs a little bit easier to get through stuff like that. Uh, and a Carolina rig, Brian Clary said, uh, t- would you fish a Texas rig or a Carolina rig? You know, Carolina rig is something that, that you and I don't fish a ton anymore. Um, you probably fish it more than I do. I, I mean, mean, I know yeah, you. Yeah, I still throw it a fair amount, but I favor a Texas rig, Dan. Like, just when I'm fishing brush or anything like that, I, I really like a Texas rig. If it happens to be really, really windy, I'll go to a Carolina rig with an ounce weight or maybe even an ounce and a quarter. It it really depends on how bad the wind's blowing there, but I just I feel like I can target brush more effectively with a Texas rig than I can a Carolina rig. Drew Goolsby, uh, good point. He said, "What about a menace or a beaver style bait, creature style bait?" <laughs> Excuse me. So one thing I've seen this time of year, and I've seen some of those big fish get on places like this, is kind of those flat. If your lake's got a lot of natural shoreline, some of those pea gravel points. Um, those little mixed rock points, um, not the super, super steep stuff, but kind of the 45 or the flatter stuff, even flatter than the 45s. And they'll get on, and they're little secondary deals like that. And a good way to fish those places that might not have a brush pile, they might be more rock, hard bottom related, is the wobble head. And a wobble head is something yeah. that has gone overlooked a little bit. I mean, it, it's gotten a lot of attention, but that's a good way to cover water. And I'll throw it out there in that 8 to 15 foot range. And I'll point my rod tip straight at it or just to the side, and I'll keep it on a tight line, and I'll just wind it real slow. Just constantly wind it. And, I mean, I've had some just knock slack in that thing this time of year. So, yeah. And that's something that, you know, I'm glad he said that because that's just – It does get overlooked a lot. It does get Even overlooked. Even though Tommy Biffle made it very famous, it still kind of gets overlooked. It does. It does, absolutely. Um, Bobby Thackerson, what's up, Bobby? He wants to know what size weight on the Texas rig. Um for me, it, I mean, it can be wind dependent, but depth dependent more than anything. Um, usually around a five sixteenths, yeah, quarter ounce is is what I'm throwing. I might go to a three eighths if I need to feel it a little bit better. You know, if it's windy or or something like that, or if I'm fishing a little bit deeper. Yeah, I, I agree. I I try to get, use the the lightest weight I can get away with. I I never go a heavier than a three eighths, and if it's slick, calm, and no wind. And I can get away with a three sixteenths. I'll I'll throw that most of the time, just to because I want that worm falling slow. When it comes over a limb, I want it to to fall right through their face. I don't want it to just plummet by them. I want it to stay right there 
in the strike zone and fall a little bit slower and give those fish that are recovering time to come over there and get it. So I'm normally a three sixteenths to a quarter ounce. Guy. They want to know, I've, I've seen this question twice, um, one from Ryan Sowers, one from Lynn Robinson. Do you peg your sinker on your Texas rig that time do. of year? I always do <clears throat> all year. Anyway. Yeah, I've, I've never really not used a, a, a bobber stop or something on my no. Texas rigs over the past probably 15 years. Um, I haven't either. Anytime I've got a Texas rig, I use a bobber stop. Uh, I don't understand why you wouldn't use it. Yeah, Evan White, um, I hope we answered your question talking about the wobblehead. He said if you're fishing long, flat points – with little structure, would you go Carolina rig or Texas rig? You know the Carolina rig for sure, but don't forget about that wobblehead. That thing that's that's a perfect scenario, a perfect situation to use that wobblehead in. Um, Ryan Sowers, we were gonna fish. Excuse me, we were gonna feed Mister Wilson tonight. <laughs> we had a special treat for y'all. I know we mentioned it last week. Jeff actually went to the pet store. Uh, they usually what time they normally close, Jeff? Like six. Yeah. Yeah, they normally close at six. Jeff was there at five o'clock. And for some reason, they started four. closing early yeah. now, so they're closing at 4 or 4.30. Um, we will try to do that on the next show. We won't have a show next week, but we'll have one. Actually, it might be two weeks. Brian's going to be out of town for a yeah, couple I'm weeks. Yeah, I'm going to be out of town for the next um, two weeks. But we, we, when we get back in the studio here in a couple weeks, we'll uh, we'll try to get that done for y'all. We promise. Uh, now that we know the pet store's closing earlier. <laughs> The Tokyo rig. We talked about that a little bit, Alan Lale, in a, in a previous yeah. episode. I've we, still never thrown it. Yeah, you? I've thrown one, but I don't. I have not caught a fish on one yet. I ha, I don't have much experience with it, like yeah, literally twenty casts, um, <laughs> and and that's about it. Let's see. Uh, Don Samantha Tackett, what's up? Thanks for watching, y'all. He said he uses a toothpick. You know, I I got away from toothpicks several years back just from the simple fact of it. If it, you know, potentially. Pinching Not that it does, line, yeah. but potentially pinching and or damaging your line. Yes. Um, Especially if you're using a tungsten weight because it's so much harder than a lead weight. It it could push the line, you know, wedge it in that tungsten. If that tungsten weight slides in at all, it could create a – could chafe the line up or something like that. If you're using lead, it's probably fine. But I, I would recommend going to a bobber stop. Jeff, Matt Newman said you had one job. You couldn't get – Mr. Wilson's food. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of odd, wasn't it? Yeah, so that, oh, you're back. Something COVID on the door. I don't know what Jeff's it was. Jeff's back. Everything was, all right? Feels weird. I just had to do a little something. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Um, ever fish Lake Chickamauga? Uh, yes, we yes. have fished Chickamauga quite a bit over the years. Yeah. Um, Last four or five years, a lot. Yeah, and we will be there for the Elite Series in October. You'll be there. I'll be there. In late in, June. Yeah, mid to late June. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, actually, I was talking to Wheeler earlier today, and he's he's already out there oh, practicing, getting ready for y'all to come. I it. He lives out there. <laughs> he can't wait. He lives on the lake. Uh, so, um, when throwing a moving bait, this is from Catcher Lewis. What's up, Jody? Uh, like a spinner bait, swim, uh, I hit a button and it went off. Uh, uh, spinner bait. Swim jig, etc. Do y'all wait till the bait is out of the water before you hit your trolling motor to continue down the bank? Um, yes, that's a great tip. I cannot tell you. I'm always super, super, super observant uh, on what's going on in the water behind my bait, around my bait. When I get it close to the boat, uh, caught a lot of fish, you know, that have short lined me within five, six, seven foot of the boat. If I'm chunking and winding something, I, I'm I'm always trying to finish my cast before I hit the trolling motor to continue to move the boat. Yes, 100%, especially in shallow water. Um, sometimes it doesn't matter, but I could, you know, yeah. if, if, if that one five or six pounder is following it and you hit the trolling motor before your bait's out of the water, then you're nine times out of ten, you're going to run that fish off. Um, Brian, you ever slow down enough to do that? Not really. <laughs> Not really. So, I keep uh, chunking and winding. <laughs> there again, back to his theory of – <laughs> of only having to make five of the right decisions throughout a day so if make, you make longer casts yeah if you're covering it out at the end of the cast yeah, the boat. if you're covering more water in exchange for scaring a few because your trolling motor never slows down then <laughs> maybe you'll run across another one that's willing to bite before he gets to the boat so um i guess it's kind of a catch-22 yeah um, somewhat so. <laughs> Jack Howell said, no more potty breaks for you, Jeff. You're gone too long. Actually, I wasn't back. I was actually talking to Sam from Topwater Blowups, putting a little something special together for everybody. So ah, it's all good. Well, we, we've, we've, pushed, we've pushed 400 viewers. I don't know if we're going to get to give away a second lose reel tonight We still got time. I got faith in you. We do. Uh, how, what, what time? How, what time is it? 
740. Okay. 740. All right. So we haven't touched on this at all. Um, all right. Let's go with it. The mental funk phase. So we talked about the funk phase of the fish and kind of how we approach that. But let's talk about when your mind goes through the funk. When you get when you when you get to making ten bad decisions in a row, yes. and you ain't had a bite. Um, that how has you, been how, my demise a how, lot. How you overcome that? You want me to start with it? Yeah, yeah. All right. That was it, this was this was your brainchild. <laughs> oh yeah, because get after it's it. something that plagued me early on in my career, and I still find myself getting in that weird funk where poor guy finished like, second in his very first pro <laughs> event ever I and mean, early in his career though it plagued him remember <laughs> it did it's rough but <laughs> anyways this when i first started fishing professionally and i would get in this funk where i it seemed like nothing was going right everywhere i went i couldn't get bit i would tend to fish faster and faster and faster and faster and it would be like a huge snowball effect until I could not get bit anywhere on anything, doing anything, because I wouldn't give the fish a chance to bite. And I've learned after about five or six years, when I get like that, the best thing for me to do is to change the whole situation I'm fishing in. Do the exact opposite. Like, if I'm down on the lower end of a lake fishing grass or rock or docks or whatever, and I find myself going a couple hours without getting bites and i'm i start running around like crazy making three or four casts saying this sucks going somewhere else and making three or four casts i will sit down i will strap my rods down and i will go to a completely different area of the lake sometimes as far away as i can get from where i'm at just to change my mental attitude because i haven't been up there i have no expectations I don't know what's going on, but I know it can't be any worse than where I've been. So I just change my whole attitude, my whole fishing situation where I'm at and just go to something totally different and try to figure it out just like I'm in practice because that that's where you get I get stuck in that mental funk is when I find something in practice and I run with it and can't get bit on any of it and I'm lost, don't know what to do crank up go do something totally different like if you've if you're fishing offshore and you run all your deep stuff and you haven't had a bite crank up run way up the river go flip bushes do something like that go to the bank fish docks you know if you're fishing the bank throwing top water in practice get a bunch of bites come tournament time you fish for three hours haven't had a bite haven't seen a fish run offshore just do the exact opposite of what you've been doing and a lot of times that it may not be the right move, but in your mind, it at least gets you to thinking and gets you feeling like you're going to get a bite. Because when I get on those bad runs where I'm making bad decisions and not getting bite, I'll actually start feeling like I'm not going to get a bite. And that is the worst thing you can ever be, worst mind frame you can ever be in when you're out fishing in a tournament, especially is feeling like what you're doing, you know it's not going to work, but you're doing it anyways. Just change it up completely. And then you'll fish with confidence and feel like you're going to get a bite. And most of the times when you feel like you're going to get a bite, you actually get a bite. <laughs> yeah. I mean, getting out of a mental funk, especially in a tournament situation, is one of the hardest things to do and, and to learn over time. Experience on the water um, is one of the best ways to overcome it. But I think, you know, being able to throw everything out the window and go to the opposite end of the lake and completely start over – um, look, just changing the scenery and looking at something different can change your mental state fast. Just like Brian said, yep. just just seeing something different. It's almost like, you know, going turkey hunting. And I, I'm going to reference turkey hunting because the turkey season just ended and it just came to my mind. And it gives me a chance to talk about hunting. But um, tur tur turkey hunting, like you, you go to a property and you don't hear a bird gobble and you get – you get depressed, and you know there's birds around, and they're not gobbling. The world's going to end. The, the world's coming to an end, end yeah. yeah and can't uh, take it anymore. You, you throw everything in the truck, and you go to another property and just start over from scratch. And then because you have the confidence. That is a good analogy. Because when you have the confidence, when you pull up to this fresh property that you haven't so been to I'm yet gonna that morning, I'm going to find a, a, a willing gobbler, and I'm fixing to lay the steel to his nose. Mm -hmm. Lay it to his nose. Mm -hmm. Turn him to a jelly head, Jeff. Mm hmm you ever heard that before? Yes. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Um, 
So, was that a good analogy? That was a good analogy. All right. It was. All right. Um, so, yeah, Brian, but Brian, Brian probably explained a little better than I did. <laughs> How many times, <laughs> y'all can both answer this. How many times have you been on the water, completely lost, with no clue of what to do? Well, we always have ideas. I, Brian, Brian's Brian's going to be all humble and be like, I'm always lost. I don't ever know what I'm doing. I mean, I'm serious. <laughs> like, in a tournament I mean, situation. I've got several examples of that. Yeah, I mean. Early I, in my career. A lot have I been yeah. on the water. I tell you what's worse is when you come in and you've had a rough day and these 25 of these dang fellow pros drop 20 pounds on the scale, yeah. and then you really feel like an idiot. Because you're trying to figure out what to do tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> because it, it seems like when things are going like that, like it may not even be the fish not biting. It may be. Everywhere, like you round the corner to go in a pocket, somebody's already in there, or something. Just little things like that. You've just got to get away from it and go somewhere fresh. But it, it it happens quite often. I mean, more often than not, it it does happen. And I've got a perfect example of that when we were at Lake Fork, the for the last BPT event, the uh, first day of the event, first day I fished, I had a place that I thought I could put my power poles down right when they said lines in and catch you know eight or ten that weighed 40 pounds in about 25 minutes so <laughs> i run in there i put my power poles down i'm sitting there got everything lined up got a rod in my hand i'm waiting for lines in because i'm fixing to just mash them for about <clears> 30 <throat> minutes straight needless to say after about an hour o'brien has not had a bite not one bite nothing and it's rare. It starts the, the I feel the panic starts setting in. I'm like, man, score trackers lighting up. Everybody's catching them. I've not had a bite, so I start running around to several other places I had bites. Never got a bite. So 30 minutes left in the first period. I go to a pocket I've never been in before on Lake Fork. I go in there. I fish around it, and when I get back to the point where I started on, I'm in first place at the end of the first period just by changing my mind frame going somewhere i've never been and actually doing something different i started out throwing a frog and a swim jig could not get bit that was my next question what would what, you throw in the magic yeah. code so i started out throwing a thro frog and a swim jig thinking that's what i was going to catch them on and after two hours of that and no bites i went in a pocket i've never been in picked up a Domeki knockout and a little four inch tube and started flipping slowing down and like the third flip i caught a four pounder second flip i caught like a or the next second flip after that was like a five pounder and then it dawned on me uh idiot all those fish you were catching are now on the bed you need to slow down <laughs> so <laughs> uh billy wooten's got what's up billy he's got a good point too sometimes you just need to take five and eat lunch just that, eat that something. is very true and, and that's so true i even in a tournament sometimes you just yeah. need to reset your mind and that goes back to, and I've never really, not in a tournament situation, have like sat down without doing anything and eating lunch and just chilled. But what I have done is I've, I've, I've got my sandwich out or my apple or whatever it may be um, and just start riding. Yeah. Like start riding. And then as soon as, as soon as you see something that just, just hits you, yeah. swing in there and fish it. Yep. Like you don't have to go to the other end of the lake necessarily. I know Scott Fell said I don't make enough money to run to the opposite end of the lake and start over that many times. <laughs> but that does it. That you don't have to run twenty five miles. Yeah, run three miles. Run yeah. somewhere you've never been. Just just look for something you've never fished before. Right. I mean right. that that's a lot of it. I mean just the the whole thought process of of maybe learning something new and figuring something new out will give you confidence that you could get bit when you're not getting bit too um ryan sowers wants to know do you guys talk to yourself while fishing yes I and, and i i cuss myself out a lot i've done that like, a lot. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. i do I, in my head of course i don't scream profanities while i'm on the water no. <laughs> but i do i do uh and um usually it consists of me looking back at my official and asking him if if i'm like really sucking as bad as i am so what's so. the one in the last Mark Carlson, Mark. in the last two years or three years, doesn't matter. In the recent history, what's the one moment where you would have beat your own self up? What's the situation? <laughs> oh, I can tell you. Well, this this has not been recent, but this has been. It was actually the last time we fished Lake Eufaula. Um, I I I did everything backwards that day, so. 
decision making timing is everything especially when you're dealing um, like what we dealt with at the flw field years ago that was close to 200 boats you yeah. know 175 200 boats when you're dealing with a field that size your timing and your decisions is everything because if you get to fishing in a bad cycle yeah, you get in a bad rotation you get in a bad rotation and, and it's just like there ain't no fish in the lake because yep. there's certain guys you just don't want to fish behind ever and uh, it was it was at a it was actually day one of a of a lake you fought and i don't even know why i did this but i started off by fishing deep and then i went shallow later in the day and hindsight's always 20 20 the second day i went shallow and i caught them fine i stayed shallow all day and, and caught a decent bag um, but the first day i weighed in one bass and 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 it was not a great brian won that tournament i believe that's the one brian won and it was not a uh, it was not a like the weights weren't gigantic or nothing like that you know you catch 13 14 15 pounds a day you did pretty good in that tournament right and um the first day i had one bass and uh, actually brian knew was my co-hanger that day um and, and he did he, he he just said that i was with you that day he he did uh he caught four or five behind me and, and had a good day with me um and maybe that's why i didn't catch any because i had like one of the best co-hangers on the planet in the back <laughs> of my boat no but um yeah, I just did everything backwards that day. I made every decision I made was wrong. Um, it did nothing. I did even felt right. Like yeah. you know when you oh, make yeah. that decision you're, and and you get there and you, as soon as you make like five or six casts, you're like, this doesn't feel right. But then you do it a little bit longer. Then you change. Then you change and you make five or six casts and you're like, this doesn't feel right either. Yeah. And then you go around the corner and you're fishing right behind somebody. And you're like, crap. Yeah. You know. And then you get hung and everything. You yeah. Throw everything. Just... And your co-anglers kicking your butt. <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta sit down take a <laughs> breath but that was mine so 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 what's yours <laughs> brian um well you talked you talked about yours yeah i kind of talked about about mine at fork like i like i you know, i wasn't to the point i was mad and r- real frustrated <laughs> but it was because it was so early in the event i don't tend to get that mad if until it's like day two and i really really need to catch them and i can't figure anything out but it the i'm trying to think um well i'll tell you i've got a story that it kind of falls into this but it's a little different (laughs) the very same event at lake fork the last day i made the top 10 cut and we were at uh, lake athens so i found this uh three and a half pounder on a bed and there was like eight with it when i first seen them and they were real shallow and of course i bloated out and pushed mud all up on it so i had to wait about 30 minutes before i could go fish for it and that made me mad that was the first straw number one right there (laughs) (laughs) it gets way better boys it gets way better (laughs) so i I stay in the area fishing don't catch any and i'm like all right i'm gonna go see if it's cleaned up pull up there the the three and a half pounder still there big ones of course it's gone so i obviously i need to catch a three and a half pounder because i'm way down the leaderboard I put my power poles down. I start fishing. It's nipping at my bait every cast. I hook it twice and lose it. Mm. That this, helps the this, metal funk. This it? is about 30 minutes. In. Oh, it gets better. This is about 30 minutes into it. Then I, I think it nips at my bait for a little bit more, and we have the end of the period. So it's the end of the first period. We've got a 15-minute break. I'm sitting. I'm power pole down. I'm sitting there looking at him. I'm like, cool. I've got 15 minutes I'm not that I can't mess with him. I'm going to stand up first cast. I'm going to catch him, and we're going to be on our way. So, all right, so 15 minutes goes by. I'm sitting there watching him. He's just sitting there all happy as he can be. I get up on the front deck, pitch my bait in there first cast, hook him, lose him again. Yes. Yes. Now you're ready. So I've got about <laughs> 45 minutes invested in this fish and it's getting personal like i'm gonna catch this fish if it takes me all day long the rest of the day i'm gonna catch one more bass but it's it's so it's gonna be that (laughs) it so gets personal with bedfish it does so i mean i'm mad so then about 30 minutes later i get it to bite again i hook him i get him in the boat he's outside the mouth (laughs) i got to throw him back i throw him back I've got about 30 minutes left in the so the whole the last 20 minutes of the first period the whole second period I'm on this one three and a half pounder trying to catch him because he's made me that mad so I got 30 <laughs> minutes left in the second period after I've released him from hooking him outside the mouth 
I get him to biting again. Like I was fixing to troll off and I look I, like I've got my bait rigged and he's sitting back up on the bed after I throw him back. So I'm Was like, this fish in a bunch of lily pads? Yes. I saw this. I yes. saw it. Was I went, bad. I saw actually the only part I saw was when you hooked him outside the mouth. Yeah. And 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 but you hey, you you can contr- I mean, visually as somebody watching, you did pretty good emotionally. Because, oh, yeah. oh, no, and because was, there are some people out there that oh, would have lost it. It was bad. So, so I, I've thrown him back. He's back up there again. I get him to biting again about 30 minutes later. We've got just a few minutes left in the second period. And I can't get him to eat the bait again. So, lines out into the second period. So, now I've got about three hours invested in this fish of my <laughs> fishing day. And I was so frustrated. I'm like, I'm catching this fish. But during our breaks, you know, we can do whatever as long as it's not fishing related. We can call our wives, whatnot. So I called Allie up because my head was screwed up. Like you, you call me? Well, I, you're not my wife. I called Allie. <laughs> Allie can straighten my head out. So I'm talking to her, and she's like, "What are you doing?" And I said, "This fish has made me mad." You got to catch it. <laughs> and she says, "You called you called your wife on an MLF break?" Yeah, we can do that. To just Talk about a bad so fish she could straighten that my had head. made you mad? Yes. <laughs> and she says, maybe the good Lord don't want you to catch that bass. So you left it alone. And I said, you are right, Miss Allie. So the period starts. I go somewhere else and catch four or five, see a couple more good ones on the bed. So You never went back to that fish, right? Never went back. To okay, it. good. Never went back. <laughs> Didn't even want to after she told me that. Good. So she saved the day i mean i still finished 10th because i wasted three and a half hours on this bed fish but <clears throat> she helped me out she got my head back on straight <laughs> buddy black i gotta get yeah he's probably right what? if you'd have called me i just told you you suck <laughs> probably, <quit. laughs> probably, probably. <laughs> uh uh kevin will know of the three tournaments in new york this year which one am i looking forward to the most uh honestly you know, St. Lawrence was awesome last year. Champlain hadn't been to in a couple of years. Can't wait to go back there. But Cayuga, Cayuga, um, it kind of bit me a little bit last year. I had a little bit of mechanical issue the first day up there last year and didn't get to run around. I was kind of stuck in one spot all day. Um, I can't wait to go back there. That place is flat, full of them, and uh, it is an awesome fishery. And uh, I want a, I want a second chance at that one. I think I ended up 40-something in that tournament, and uh, and I was not very proud of that finish because uh, it's a phenomenal lake, and I didn't get to take full advantage of it. So I can't wait to go back to Cayuga. Um, I'd like to go there, too. I've never been there. Ron Sauer said, have you have any of you ever fell out of the boat? Well, I have not, but oh, yeah. there's actually footage of, of yeah. thrift on YouTube, I believe. Yeah, falling. I, I fall out of the boat all the time. <laughs> <laughs> At least once a week. <laughs> I do remember the. Uh, actually, I, well, let me rephrase that. I f- actually fell out of the boat into the lake once. Was that was that the tournament on Loudon Teleco? Yeah, that was for Loud yeah. Teleco. I remember that. But now I've fallen <laughs> in the floorboard of the boat lots of times. I ain't ashamed of it. You all but broke your ankle by falling in the floor of the boat last year, didn't you? I did break my ankle last year. Was it broke? Well, no, it wasn't broke. Yeah. It was messed up. <laughs> you sprained it really I considered bad. it broke. Yeah. you. <laughs> till our buddy Walt told me it was. <laughs> yeah. You, so, spra- you had a bad sprain, but you, yeah. you, you twisted it on the net or something, right? Yeah, but that wasn't, like, I wasn't fishing. That was dark, and the net handle was in the floor, and I stepped on it. Right, it, right before blast off. No, it was like 530 in the morning. Yeah, before blast off, yeah. though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I've fallen in the floorboard of the boat several times. Be either be setting the hook, boat weight, something. It happens. Yeah. Uh, let's the, let's the take worst let's... I've ever done. I gotta tell this story. <laughs> <laughs> Brian's on a roll. Oh yeah, this is a good one. So this was early in our career. One of the first times we went to Kentucky Lake with FLW. It it, it actually wasn't my fault. I fell in the boat this time. But do you remember when we were there and there were bad storms and we had like water spouts and stuff all over the lake? Where? Kentucky Lake. It's like two. Yes, I have a picture of that on my on yeah. my Instagram somewhere of of one not a spout but an awful storm. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. So we were on Kentucky Lake and there's this. I'm fishing this school of fish out on a ledge and there's a water spout like coming across the lake, and it's coming at me, but it's a couple miles away. I'm not that concerned. And then it gets a little closer, and it gets a little closer, and and I'm getting to the point where all right, we let's go somewhere else till this thing gets out of the way. It's probably a mile and a half from me now. And I grabbed this was before the invention of the G-force trolling motor handle from TH Marine. I grabbed 
the handle on my trolling motor and I get it about all its weight on it. Like I'm pulling it up quick because I'm running from this mini tornado running across the lake. Well, the sh I've got all my weight pulling this string and it breaks. And all I remember is going back like this. So I remember that. And then I remember my co-angler looking at me in the face, asking me if I'm all right. I don't know how long he said Where'd I was you all, end up all the way in the back. I ended up, I fell like with half of my back on the deck and the other half in the floorboard. I guess I hit my head or something, but I was, <laughs> he said I was only out for like five or 10 seconds, but I don't remember flying through the air. I don't remember landing. I if you've remember, ever knocked yourself out, while I have fishing, knocked myself out once before. Give us a thumbs up in the comments. He almost <laughs> did it with his rod one time on a hook set. I, I saw that. that. That was awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> I mean, uh, and, you, and, and you caught the fish. I mean, very Roger Metz, I promise I have never fallen out of my boat. I have never fallen out of the boat. I have it. I knock on wood. I knocked on wood hard because I'll probably fall out of it every single tournament this year now. Uh, but I really never have fallen out of the boat. I've been really close a lot of times, but I've never fallen out. I've fallen in the boat a lot, Yeah. Uh, but I've never fallen out. The one out. time I fell in, it's best to, if, you, if you're if you going to fall in, just go ahead and jump in until it looks like you did it on purpose because yeah. there's no stopping it. You can't stop it. Um And like cannonball, like really – Make it look like you're trying to do it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like just dive or something. <laughs> uh, let's see. All right. So we're, we've come up on the hour, uh, guys and gals. Um, don't forget, we're getting ready to do our uh, – we only hit we, – we, we got close to like 400. We didn't hit 500, so we're only giving away one lose reel tonight. <laughs> yes, Mark, you have. <laughs> I forgot about that. What's that? <laughs> Brian, Clary asked how often we get hooks in our hands, and Mark McWall responded, I cut one out of three or four. Mm. Actually, you cut two out, if I remember, Mark, because it was at Murray, and I just caught a fish on a – it's crankbait or topwater. Anyway, it's a treble hook bait. And I'd caught two at one time. And one of them stuck a hook in my hand. And it had it was like four minutes four way in. Ooh. And it had two of the trebles in my finger, like one here and one here where I couldn't open my finger. Oh, I had it kind of bent. Yeah, like, it had it like, shut. Yeah, like that. Mm. Well, anyway, Mark helped me get them cut out. So thank you, Mark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've had a few hooks in myself. And, uh, I did that one time, got one in my heel of my foot. My dad, <coughs> excuse me, my dad had a, um, we used to do some kingfishing down off the North Carolina coast, and, and he had some live bait kingfish rigs um, laying in the floor of the house we grew up in. This is when I was in high school. Well, it might have been in middle school. Um, but I stepped on the live bait rigs, got just a, a little live bait hook with a stinger hook coming out in the back. That's a treble. You've seen yeah. them. Everybody's seen them. That, that saltwater fish is. And uh, when my, my heel hit that treble, you know, something sticks, you kind of jerk. Yeah. And I don't know how I did it, but when I jerk, I pushed down on it, and I got two of the three buried up in my heel. <laughs> so you can't you can't pull that out, no. you know. So no. anyway, I had it. Mom you, drove you me to the doctor. to the doctor. Yeah, we went to the doctor. We got some <laughs> Novocaine. It was Novocaine that they shot me up with in my heel, and they, they actually they pushed them through, cut them off, and pulled oh, them yeah. back out. So, um, but, yeah, that's that's the worst hook deal i've ever had the rest have been single hooks and been yeah. able to be removed pretty easily um let's see we uh we are past the hour actually and it is time for sure to uh to do our trivia giveaway um so we're giving away a lose reel tonight to the winner um everybody's saying 500 let's go i bet if everybody came over from all the other pages which by the way if you're submitting an answer for this trivia question and it's not on the let's talk fish facebook page you're not eligible we won't see your answer unless it's on this page um all right so here we go are we ready anything else we need to we need to address before we get off of here no that's, that's a when's our show. next show it's going to be at – well, see, here's the I'm problem. I'm not going to be here for two weeks, so it's up to y'all to have one in two Brian's weeks. not going to be here for the next two weeks. Um, I actually leave on that next weekend to go to Eufaula. Yeah. Um, the fifth or sixth. Uh, I think you're gone. Are you gone for two weeks? Or Yeah, I'll be gone for this coming week and the next. So, guys, it, it might be a little while. If I can get a, a, a guest in here um, in when the next – When are you leaving when I get back? I leave on the fifth uh, or sixth of oh, June. Oh, so you're going the same time I am. The second. No, week. but you said you leave like yeah, the first. Yeah, I'm gonna leave the second. That's right. Oh yeah. 
We'll figure it out. Now, if you're leaving the second, that's a Wednesday, I think. Is it? I think. I'm not oh. sure. We may have a show. We may not. <laughs> if, we, if we can have a show before Brian gets no, out of I'm here. I'm leaving the seconds on a Tuesday. Okay, never mind then. Um, if I can get a guest in here, guys, we'll have another show. If not, um, I will. Uh, uh, we will see y'all. It's going to be a few weeks. But forgive us. But the good thing is we get to start back fishing, and we're going to have a lot of tournament updates to give y'all when we get back in the studio. Um, all right, here we go. Trivia question time. Tonight's trivia answer is – just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Give it time. <laughs> Give Easy. it time. Easy. It'll, um, it'll happen. Tonight's trivia question. We need to know – this is for a lose reel. We need to know what Jeff's – that's right, Jeff. Jeff's personal best bass is. Now, it can be a smallmouth, spot, or largemouth. I need to know the weight in pounds and ounces, and I need to know which species it was. Oh, we're doing species. Yeah, they got they got to name the species. I'm making it tough on them because you are making it the tough. weight the weight in pounds and ounces is not going to be terribly hard because there's so many there's only so many you know it's right. not like you, you get past twenty pounds or That's something true. you know. That's true. Um, so pounds and ounces of Jeff's personal bass and the species. Okay, that's what I need. Ready, set, go. Go. Uh, Brian Clary <laughs> want to know if, if P line was still on sale. Um, um, the BOGO is currently not going on. Well, what I understood, though, is if there was some stores that were shut down or closed during the COVID oh, deal, yeah. that they would still honor that through the end of May. But, right. Brian, you'll have to check with your local dealers that might be uh, – that might have been shut down during the, uh, the, the this COVID crisis because – P-Line, the way they explained it to us is that they would honor that through the end of May for those stores that were not yeah, open. Yeah, had to shut down. Uh, during during the month of April. So um, there are there are going to be a few out there that are still participating. I just don't know which ones they are. Yep. Um, there might be one in your... Uh, Ooh, uh, I've seen a close one. Striper uh, is not eligible. No. Um, it, it, it's it's got to be a large mouth spot or small mouth. And we just need the weight in pounds and ounces. I've seen some close ones. I, I have seen, seen some close ones. If y'all see one, then you can do it. I've not and, seen and, and here's my hint. Jeff has not bass fished a ton over his lifetime. No. Um, that's why we wanted to use Jeff tonight, because we've we've talked about our PBs on the show. Yes. And we've never talked about Jeff's PB. No, we have not. Um, what Ernie Wallace said, 1.5. <laughs> Close, I got something for Ernie. <laughs> <laughs> He's not giving you much credit, is he? <laughs> oh, Ernie, my man, Ernie's down there chasing those, uh, chasing them spot tails, <laughs> spot tails and speckle belly, speckle, speckle. We all call a spe- we all call a speckle trout down there, just speckle trout, just sea trout, sea trout. I now wait a minute, there's like right, I've got a winner. <laughs> the first one I see, Jeff's got a winner. You do? Oh, gosh, hold yes. on a second. Let me let me verify this. You did this last week, and we never... I know, it. but it comes up on this screen, and you can't hardly see it because it's that, so fast. That feed doesn't matter. Use your phone. We may not have a winner. Use your phone. Well, I saw one. I see one I see one that's close. I haven't seen a correct one on my feed. Have you, Brian? No, I have not. Okay. I have definitely have not. Use your phone so we can scroll back and verify it. Now, and, guys, whatever comes through on Jeff's phone... First, would you have to say we could call it out if we see? Yeah, that's there. right. That's right. <laughs> um, What's some more good stories while people are guessing here for the lose reel? Do what now? You have any more funny stories? For, I mean, I got all kinds of funny stories, but I don't. I don't know if I want to put any of my friends' heads on a chopping block while we're sitting here on the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I'd rather talk about my my buddy's mishaps than my mishaps. You know that. Oh, well, you're right. No. I do have a funny story about a friend of mine shooting his. Uh, I'm talking about fishing related. Shoot. Yeah, but this is this is funny. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, I, I won't even tell the story, but he 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 was loading his muzzle loader with his ramrod, and he left his ramrod in there and shot it out of it when we were shotting our muzzle loaders in one time. <laughs> That pertains to nothing to do with fishing. Yeah, but it was so awesome. <laughs> There's got to be an answer. <laughs> it thing kicked so hard, it, it busted him right there between the eyes. And, <laughs> and it, it kicked hard because it's not, you know, not enough powder in there to 
throw that 50 caliber bullet and a ramrod. That is true. That <laughs> but is it true. threw that ramrod right through the target, dude. I mean, <laughs> right through the target. Uh, I won't. I won't name my buddy who did that. I, I, I'll Was protect his name him. Matt. I protect. No, it's, his name's not Matt. <laughs> I didn't do it. My phone literally just went from like 700 comments to 1100 comments and one refresh. There's got to be an answer in here. I haven't I seen haven't one. Seen one. Well, I mean, we've been. Well, I, they've been all over it. Yeah, a bunch of people. Here's been the all problem. Over it. What about a hint? It we, was have, a large we have amount. four comment feeds right here. Oh, you yeah. already said it. And hint. I guarantee you they're all different. Yeah, I'm giving a hint. It was a large mouth. It okay. was a large mouth. Thrift, so thrift. That's half of the correct answer. Hmm. I'm going to start making a rule. <laughs> what rule? <laughs> this only applies to a couple people. That if you didn't comment during the whole show, <laughs> that your answer doesn't count. <laughs> You can't do that. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. <laughs> if you didn't comment during the whole show until our trivia question that your answer doesn't count, no, I'm not going to do that to anybody. I wouldn't dare do that because a lot of people just want to get on and watch and learn right. and listen, which is, I have no I have no problem with that. I have no problem with that. Would that would be me. Like we, if I was watching the show, I wouldn't comment. We, I I'm, I'm guilty of that all the time. I get on, I get on, <laughs> get on show, live shows all the time and just listen. I do as well. Just here for the comments. Yeah. And that, you know, that's what the little meme that says. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> so it is a large mouth guys uh, and gals if you uh all right i got a winner for the second time you have i'm gonna winner. go back and find the first winner and i'm gonna send you a reel too i'm gonna message you uh if you find it if i find it but <laughs> the first one i saw that i could read um uh, was Derek taylor Derek taylor. taylor and that's and tell them what the answer is five seven large mouth five pounds seven ounce large mouth the winner is Derek taylor um he said, Jeff said he saw the same answer earlier, and if he can go back and find it in his feed, he has to find it in his feed, he will send them a reel also. So we did end up giving away two reels tonight. We did. Just maybe. Because, maybe. Just because I know it was an answer before, I just got to go find it. Yeah. All right. Um, so Derek Taylor and the mystery winner, <laughs> send us. Potentially, send, if I can send, find you. Send, send us a message on Facebook with your shipping address, your mailing information. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> Ryan Hiding said he's been from 5'8 to 7'10 every ounce in large bow, and the answer was 5'7. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes, sometimes you're just one ounce away. Sometimes you're one ounce away. Hey, at least it didn't cost you $100,000, you know. So, um, But all right, so Derek, send us a message with your shipping information. Congratulations to you on winning the lose reel. Jeff will get that shipped out to you this week. And, uh, guys, it's going to be a couple weeks till we get back in the studio. Um, we're, yeah, nice, Ernie. You're coming in with a 5'7 largemouth now. I see yeah, you. Good yeah. job, Ernie. <laughs> He'll message me, too. How was the other one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, you're probably going to get 68 messages as soon as the show No, I remember says, the name. I just it was me. Go it was it. me. It was me. <laughs> um, all right. So, guys, uh, congratulations to the winner and or winners. We lost another light. Yeah, that one's we not did. plugged in. <laughs> We're losing lights. But in the dark. that's a good time to get off, man. was caught in probably 1988, 89-ish. There you go. Were you like 25 then? Hole number eight. Hole number eight. Country Club of Orangeburg. Hole number eight <laughs> and the Country Club of Orangeburg. Oh, me. Uh, all right, so guys, enjoyed the show. We had a good time. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, got up to almost 400 viewers tonight. Yeah. Um, Brian, since you're going to be gone for a couple of weeks, we might have a show without you if I can get a guest in here, but you want to sign us out? Yeah, I'll sign us out. Thank you again, guys, and looking forward to coming back for the next show I'm here for, just for the simple fact we will have tournaments to recap again, finally. So that's going to be fun and exciting. Hopefully we've got a lot to talk about, and we've both done really well. So... Next time we're here, remember, if we can't go fish, we're going to do what, Matt? Sit right here and talk fishing. Yep, that's what we're going to do. See you guys. Thank you for listening to Let's Talk Fish. Visit our private Facebook group to continue the conversation, post your questions, and talk with other fellow anglers at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Let's Talk Fish. Follow us on Instagram at Let's Talk Fish Official and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more exclusive content. Join us again next episode for more actionable tips, tactics, and techniques directly from the pros. And remember, when we can't go fishing, we're going to sit right here and talk fish.